Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to another video from Easy Automation. Today in this video, we'll be talking about how we could do better API testing of microservices using Spring Boot and what are the different ways that Spring Boot offers us to perform the testing of these APIs. We are going to talk about different ways to do the API testing, especially in terms of integration testing of these APIs, as well as how we could do the testing of the real API using the Spring Boot's annotations and amazing, awesome features Spring Boot offers. So before we actually start beginning with the automation testing straight away, the API automation testing with Spring Boot, let's understand the application testing concept itself. This is very known thing that you might have seen this many times. An application can be tested in three different layers. This is what is the testing pyramid. Basically says unit testing layer, integration testing layer, and web testing layer. So these are the three automation testing layer exist in the testing world, which will be used many time while we perform any automation testing. We already talked about it a lot. There are so many articles exist on, on this. And I also have an exclusive video just related to the testing pyramids and stuff. But in a high level, while we start talking about it, because we're gonna be talking about the middle layer, the API testing integration, the component testing, this is where we are very much focused about, and this is what we will be doing in this particular section as well, which is nothing but the integration testing layer. And you might be knowing that the unit testing layer should be pretty thin, but the number of tests that you're gonna put it should be much higher because that's where a lot of bugs are gonna be evolved. So the more the test exists on the unit testing, the better the application will be. And in the integration layer and uh, the component testing layer, if we add more tests, then it will be fab because that's gonna be more robust in terms of talking with different services and stuff. Whereas the GUI layer is very fragile. It has to be kept as minimal as possible and it should be automated in a most best way so that it could keep running the test without actually breaking the UI testing with many flaky identifiers and stuff. So if we make GUI layer perfect in terms of the framework developments and stuff, it still works better, but just that it's gonna be slow and it will be flaky based on the environment. Whereas the integration test and the unit test will be pretty faster because they directly talk with the code and the APIs, which doesn't really involve any fragile coding there. So let's quickly see this integration testing of the API layer. So integration testing of API, and there are many tools available on the market, something like Rest Assured, or even in different uh, language like C-sharp, there is something called Rest Sharp, which is gonna be used. And if you are gonna be very tool specific, like Postman, you can do that for testing as well, SOAP UI. So there are many tools available. But when it comes to the testing in Spring Boot for the API, there are many different APIs exist as well. We'll talk about that later. But to see this, what is this integration testing of the API, you could see that this testing is done by hitting the real APIs of the application. That's it. This is gonna be testing the real endpoints of the application. But there are many problems comes with it while we actually do that. Even though it is real APIs, it's gonna be talking pretty much like how the customer is gonna be doing on the UI. It's gonna be hitting the real services, but still there exists a lot of problems because everything is real in here. The problem is it requires a real service to be working which the API uses. And these service setup should be there in place. It can be an authentication service, it, will, it can be a backend service, or it can be a service which is a third party service. So any of these service should exist in place which will be used by this particular API. If this service doesn't really exist, then while we call this API, for example, the employee, as you can see over here, if it is called, and if the backend service which requires this employee to show the list of employees will not work if they, doesn't, if they don't really exist. So it should be there in the place. And because it is gonna talk with the multiple different services in backend, the test also will be slower, uh, and it cannot be tested instantly if all these services are not there in place, which is really a pain, even though we do an integration test from the API. But this integration testing can be splitted a bit using the component level, which is nothing but the REST controller, if you remember that we developed in our earlier section. So if you see in the REST controller while we developed, it actually had two moving parts. One was the REST controller, and then it had a service. So 
This testing is useful just to test a particular component such as Spring Boot's REST controller rather than the underlying service itself. This helps to test the endpoint's functionality instead of the actual underlying service beneath it. That is the real beauty about this testing of the component side because the components can be tested in isolation or in slices. That's what the Spring Boot team always says. They call it a slice testing so that you can slice it up a particular endpoint with a particular component level and then you can test another slice the UI level which is the view level and then you can slice it to the service level something like that. So that's what is the power of Spring Boot itself like it has the dependency injection in place and we can keep slicing our application into multiple different moving parts like a components and then we can test only specific component and in this place for the integration testing we're going to be testing just the rest controller rather the service itself so we can just mock the service which is beneath it so that it can be easily automated so we can test the rest control without any problem so this is the diagram which i feel pretty interesting while we actually look at the component testing so if you could see over here we have a web and it's going to pass you the request and it's going to get a response from this particular service but actually the service might be using a controller which is going to be talking with a repository to the database and it can be talking with a client which is going to be showing you the weather api but all we are testing over here is the controller which is going to be performing the action so if we mock this client which is going to return as the weather api and if we mock the repository which is going to give us the database information we could potentially test this controller to see if this api is working fine or not because at the end of the day this controller is going to be consuming the service which is provided by the third party weather api so it doesn't matter whether they really exist until this part is fully developed or not at least we could test this controller and once this is there in place by the mock we could able to completely replace the mock to the real and then we can test it but that comes with a different problems as well like how could that be replicated as a real because it's going to be working with the mock data well this issue with the component testing that we saw can be solved with the what is called as a contract testing contract testing is immediately applicable anywhere where you have two services that needs to communicate such as an api client and the web front end Although the single client and a single service is common use case, contract testing really shines in an environment with many services as common for microservice architecture. Having a well-formed contract test makes it easy for developers to avoid version health and contract testing is the killer app for microservice development and deployment. And in general, a contract is between a consumer, for example, the client that we talked about, the component maybe, and the receiving that receives the data and the provider, for example, the API on the server that provides the data for the client need, which is nothing but the weather API that we just saw. So this is the contract that we can create from the third party just to see that this is what you are going to be giving us once the weather API is ready so that I can see the final provided application is going to look like. So this contract, we can get it and we can then test the application or the controller much easily using the contract testing. We talked about it as well in our rest assured course. I could probably add that video in this particular uh, section so that you can have more detail about it. And this contract testing can be done using a tool called as PACT. And it's really, really interesting. It provides a lot of way that you can actually get a contract between the uh, provider versus the consumers. And it gives you a complete detail. So if there is anything breaking between the contracts then it's going to throw you an error or something like that which is quite good okay now this is an additional information about contract testing to do the component testing but now coming back to the testing in spring boot like we saw the api and the integration testing how can we perform these two actions so this can be done very easily in spring boot using many different libraries that the spring boot actually provides in built and of course from the third parties so we'll be testing in many different ways this time one is using the test rest template which is provided in build by the spring boot uh, and then the rest assured it is not provided by spring boot we can add a third party libraries and there is something called as a web test client which is for the web layer and for the api layer 
uh, you can test both of them, which is available from Spring 5.0. And then there is something called as Mock MVC. This is something which is used for performing the web layer testing uh, as well. And this is pretty interesting to see how you can mock or stub the services for the controllers that we just saw. So these are the way that we can actually test the Spring Boot integration as well as in the mock way, uh, which is nothing but using the component level and see how it actually works. So test rest template is a convenience alternative to Spring's rest template. If you have heard about rest templates before, it's just an alternative. So test rest template is just an alternative of rest rest template that is useful in integration testing and using at Spring Boot test annotation that we were using all these days in our course, we can inject a fully configured test rest template and start using it. So what do I mean by the fully configured test rest template is the Spring Boot by default, well it starts, it doesn't really start you a actual server, which is the application itself. But if we define the web environment property as Spring Boot web environment is equal to web environment dot random port or web environment dot defined port, then the Spring Boot will load a web server application context providing a real web environment. That is something very, very interesting and it is being done by the Spring Boots. And this property will start the embedded server listening on the defined or random ports. The context uses the uh, Spring Boot context loader class and the at Spring Boot configuration by default. So this is this is how things are going to be. So basically, in a nutshell, with this text, the Spring Boot test, if you just call it, it is going to start the server for you. If you specify the port, the web environment is called a web environment or random port or defined port. It's going to start the web server application context for you, which means it's going to load you the Apache server behind the scene, which is coming along with your application, the embedded server that we created in our earlier section. It's pretty much like at Spring Boot application. And the sample code for the test REST template, it's going to look something like this. It's going to have the uh, arrange, act, and assert model, as you could see here. Don't worry about the code yet. We'll be talking about it later in this course, but this is how the code is gonna look like, and you can see that it's gonna be pretty simple. So that's it about the coding part, and we'll talk about all the testing related stuffs once we get into each and every tools one by one. Talk to you in our next video, where we'll start automating or testing our application in much greater detail. Thank you.